just landed in the f***ing ocean. So, my buddy here, David Lesh, just got a brand new Bonanza, bunch of mods, flew it out to California, kind of a little breaking in trip, and then the engine quit, and he just landed in the ocean. I, I can't even, like, this is still blowing my mind, like, I have, what, what is this like right now? Like, what are you going through? What are you thinking? It's surreal for sure, you know, it, there was definitely some, like, panic that set in, like, the first, uh, you know, between uh, probably 3,000 feet AGL and, like, 1,000 feet AGL, when I was trying to do everything I could to get that motor to start again, that was when I was, like, you know, a little bit of panic was setting in, but once I accepted the fact that we were going in the water, um, the, the panic was gone, and I, you know, accepted it, and I just kind of, I just went with it. So you just just sit down and, and fly the airplane. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I just did everything they tell you to do. You know, I just pitched for for you know best fly speed. Um, I kept the gear up. I kept the flaps up. Um, I told you know my my passenger to you know get their seatbelt ready. I told you know I told her hey we're going in. Um, you know prepare for impact. Um, I just kept it above the water as long as I could. I just fully stalled it. You know five or ten feet up. Uh, there wasn't any waves out there. If there were, I would have tried to you know kind of land parallel to them. Um, but it was pretty calm. Luckily, we were pointed towards you know towards shore, and um, I just you know fully stalled it. Whatever, it's five ten feet off the the water, and we just went in nice and easy. There was a little bit of a splash. We splashed along the water for you know a few hundred feet. Uh, it was like no impact. Um, and uh, you know as soon as the plane stopped, we kind of spun around a little bit. As soon as the plane stopped, you know I told her to open up the door. Um, and we got out, and I wasn't, you know, sure how quickly it would sink, but I, I had a feeling it wasn't going to take long. Um, and so uh, we were on the wing, and you know, the airplane was starting to go down, and I just did a quick, quick inventory of what we had um, with us that could help us out there on the ocean. You know, we were two or three miles out, whatever. You know, we were, we were ways. Um, and so I uh, grabbed my cell phone, I grabbed the keys of the car, um, and I grabbed uh, some flotation devices. I grabbed a seat cushion and our, my window shades. Um, and we just kind of sat there on the wing for another 15 seconds until the airplane was just gone. Um, and then, you know, we were, there was tons of jellyfish out there. Um, there was whales that were breaching right by us. Apparently there were some huge sunfish. I didn't see those, but they saw them from the helicopter. Um, jellyfish were, you know, stinging us the entire time for 45 minutes. These things were wrapping their tentacles around us. We were getting stung constantly the entire time. There's like a swarm of them. We were trying to avoid them, but there was just no avoiding them. NorCal 1746 Romeo. Okay, one seven four six Romeo. Valley seventy seven twenty one. Our count coach will point out to me three zero zero zero. Stand stand by. Okay, one seven four six Romeo. Sound number one seven four six Romeo. Flying two six zero. We're flying to two. The Bonanza is going in the water. We're heading south of sixteen eighty two. Thank you. We're heading to two eighty four. The Bonanza is going in the water. Zero seven four six Romeo. Roger. Take your position. Okay, climb it through two point six. Fly over one nine zero. Eighty four. Uh, West. Number uh, 46 Romeo, roger, can you ident please? Flash, I'm at uh, 1,000 feet circling the down airplane. Seven, number 46 Romeo, I see you out there about 5 south of Half Moon Bay. Uh, radio's going to come in a little broken at the altitude, but uh, we're on it. We're going to get the uh, Coast Guard out there as soon as we can. Okay, yeah, you could. Just landed in the f***ing ocean. There's a jellyfish here. Four six Romeo, thank you. We're in our contact about nine miles west southwest of the wood side of the OR. And you're circling right over where the aircraft uh, went down, is that correct? Yes, sir. There's two people in the water here. Yeah, the aircraft is sunk. Okay, number four six Romeo, thank you. And there was uh, only two uh, people on board that aircraft, is that correct? That is the first thirty seven five. Okay, number four six Romeo, zero traffic. And uh, yeah, we're two minutes on help as fast as we can. Left. Got the supervisors on it. Okay. Six five one one. Ed, power for the six five one one. Go ahead. Is there any way that you can head down to Hudson Bay? Looks like an aircraft may have gone down there. Ed, power for the six five one one. Affirm we're uh, diverting at this time. Okay. Ed, tower six five one one. We just need to head back to the ramp real quick to pick our rescue swimmer. I want to. Six five one one. Okay, sounds good. Landing is at the uh, Coast Guard MC drone. Rescue is traffic on shore. Final security left and two miles from trail down at seven thirty seven. Um, so we just sat out there and, uh, you know, I called Owen on my cell phone and he, uh, he was kind of circling around the wrong spot. He had lost, lost him. Yeah, he lost sight of us. You know, the airplane obviously was gone um, and there was no debris. There was nothing it's out so there. so hard to see two people bothered. Yeah, yeah. We, were, we, were, we were tiny, you know, we were just nothing out there. Um, and so he, uh, 
he uh, was in the wrong spot. And I called him on my cell phone. And I was like, hey, man, like, you know, we're good. Uh, you're in the wrong spot. Like, come, like, you know, two miles southwest. And I just, you know, he'd turn, he'd turn 20 degrees, and I'd say, oh, you need another 20 degrees left. And he'd turn 20 degrees left, and he was coming straight for me. He's like, put me off, you know, my left wing. And so I just put, you know, put us off of his left wing. And as soon as he was a beam us, I was like, hey, you know, look off your left wing. And there boom, we there, there we were. Wow. So then he just kind of circled us and, you know, could tell the, the Coast Guard. Um, you know where we were um, and how to how to pick us up. So that was like that was clutch for sure. So we're out here in the Pacific Ocean, floating around. Woo! Got some uh, homemade flotation devices here in the form of seat cushions and window shades. The water's a little bit cold, but we're all right. I set it down real easy. No one got hurt. No, we're good. Is everything right? Hopefully, someone comes picks us up soon so how like how did this happen like taking me back to the beginning like so you guys are out there flying in formation over the water you're flying the bonanza owen's flying what the 182 yeah and, you know we were gonna go do a photo shoot kind of um out over there over the, you know the marine layer or whatever um and so i was just following him and we had started a descent we were probably you know three or four thousand feet agl at that point um and just all of a sudden just motor stops producing power um and my first thought was the fuel because uh, earlier in the day when I sumped the fuel, I got a good amount of particles out of both tanks. Um, and it took me probably four or five sumps on each tank until I stopped getting particles. But you know, that's kind of somewhat normal, whatever. Like generally, you know, you, you only get one for like one or two sumps and then like, you know, it's, it's clear. It took me like, you know, four, four or five sumps to like not have any more junk come up. So that was in the back of my head and I thought, you know, it, it's not like there was a sound, it didn't go bang, there was, you know, the engine just sees up. Um, it, it just seemed something, it just seemed, it had to be fuel related. Um, and so I tried every combination I could, you know, I, I went, you know, fuel pump high, fuel pump low, I switched tanks, I, um, you know, went mixture full rich, maybe it was, you know, flooded, so I went full lean for a second, you know, throttle in, throttle out, I just tried every combination, um, you know, of stuff that I could try. Um, I tried every combination of stuff I could try, and nothing worked. Um, when I switched fuel tanks and it did something with, you know, the various combination of other things, I got power out of it for like one second, a little bit. It just gave like a little bit of a burp and it gave me a little like living room hope that like, you know, we were going to we were gonna get, get going again. And uh, then it just, you know, spluttered, fell on its face again. Um, and we, we went in. It's just, you know, it's one of those things that you hope you never have to see, but you know, you're, you're, I'm seeing it right in front of me and I just, I can't wrap my head around what's going on at the time. Um, I'm taking a video of him as I'm circling and as he hits the water. It's pretty surreal watching David uh, fly this thing and ditch it in the ocean. And um, yeah, my thought was just don't lose sight of these guys because if I do, it's going to be a lot harder for the Coast, Coast Guard to find him. And I did. I lost him for about five or ten minutes until he called me and guided me back to him. And that was a lifesaver. Yeah, he was like what? flying away. I'm like, where is he going? And I was like, I, I should call him. Did, did, you, did you call 911 too or you just called Owen? No. You know, what the hell are they going to do? You know? yeah. Owen, Owen was, yeah. you know, was up there. I was like, I'm going to call him. Owen was the first person I called. I'm like, hey, you're in the wrong spot. Like, Come back to the Southwest. So, so, uh, so I circled for another 30 minutes after that, and the Coast Guard, I guess they saw me circling first and came straight to me. And uh, where I was, um, I, I had to circle at about 500 feet just to see him, and I was below radar and radio coverage. So I, I had to periodically climb back up, check in with ATC, ident, do a radio check, and go back down and hope I could still see him, which, which I managed to. Oh yeah, starting to get a little cold out here. Lots of jellyfish bobbing around. We got Owen up there doing circles. Says there's a helicopter on the way. <laughs> Whoo! Oh. Isn't life fun? I think I was doing good for about 20, 25 minutes out there, um, and after that, I got progressively, you know, hypothermic, and I was, I was starting to freeze up for sure. I was like shaking violently, and you know, we were, we were numb. I mean, we both went numb. You know, the jellyfish were stinging us. But after, you know, 15, 20 minutes, we were totally numb. The jellyfish, you know, I, I think right. they were still stinging us, but we weren't feeling it anymore. Um, and then, you know, after I, I started, I started doing poorly after probably, you know, 30, 30 minutes, I was starting to, to freeze up pretty good.
did a boat roll up about the same time as a helicopter, or that was the Harbor Patrol that happened. Yeah, there. yeah, and it came, um, yeah, it came right around the same time. I, I wasn't sure what the deal was with that, or you know, because there was a swimmer in the water, so I wasn't sure if the swimmer was gonna, you know, go to the boat or if they were gonna drop us off at the boat. Yeah, I don't know, but yeah, there was a boat that pulled up right at the same time. Okay, but so then the swimmer jumped out of the helicopter, came, got you, they yeah, whisked so you out. Yeah, he had a basket, and I was doing worse uh, than Kayla, so. Um, they, I went up first. I was like, you know, I, I could have been fine for another five or ten minutes, but I was like, you know, hey, are you sure you're good? She was, she was not, you know, as hypothermic as I was, um, not nearly. And uh, so I went into the basket first. They brought me up, and then they had her up there within like two minutes. So. Wow. And then you guys just flew back to San Francisco, and they yeah, they flew us back to the Coast Guard hangar at the San Francisco International Airport. We took, I took like, you know, a 35 minute hot shower, 40 minute hot shower to like get warm again. I was like just shaking uncontrollably for like literally 40 minutes. Wow. Like what, what did you kind of learn going through this? Like what would you recommend for somebody well, else who ends up know, in this situation? I, what I would do differently in the future would be um, to just not fly over any open water without, you know, life vests at the very least and possibly more than that. You know, whether that stuff in the tanks was from the work that I had done with, you know, putting in the tip tanks, maybe it was some particles of metal or whatever. Um, and, you know, maybe there was that that got dislodged or maybe it was the fuel, you know, I don't know. But I, I think it's just general caution and general awareness of, you know, when I'm flying, if the motor dies right now, where am I going? Because you get this sense of security, you know, I fly around for a thousand hours and the motor's fine. Um, and so you just kind of like, oh, you know, the motor will continue to be fine. Like, I don't have to every moment be looking where I'm going to land if the motor goes out. But I think, you know, now I, I will be much more, um, you know, instinctive about, the, you know, the, the process that I go through to, one, try to get the motor started, um, two, the routes I take, uh, three, um, you know, uh, just scoping where I would land if the motor went out. Um, you know, I think I'll just be a little bit more cautious about about all that. Sure. Well, you know, and I mean, obviously, you did a, a spectacular job with this. You know, you, you could you flew it all the way to the water, like you know, didn't lose control or anything, didn't try to do anything crazy. You set it down, you got out, and and you survived. And yeah. Yeah. I mean, I just you know, I, I love reading the, all the ma you know, airplane magazines, and I read all the NTSB reports. I love those. Um, and I just know in all these situations, the way you die is by freaking out and stalling it and spinning it into the, the water, to the you know, ground, whatever. So I just, you know, flew it all the way down to the ground. I didn't do any crazy maneuvers or try to, you know, get, get crazy with it. I just, you know, flew it down to the ground. I literally was trying to get that motor started until we were, you know, 100 feet AGL uh, above water, I guess. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I, I, I just really thought to myself, okay, we're going 100 miles an hour. If I plunk this thing in, you know, face first, it's going to flip and we're going to be in rough shape. Um, and so I just eased it in so gently. You, know, you watch the video and it just skips along the right. water perfectly. And, um, you know, I was afraid to even put the flaps down. You know, maybe that helps it nose over or something. I was like, mm -hmm. no, dude, no gear, no flaps. I'm just, you know, easing it in. So. Yeah, you, yeah you, you skipped it better than like most people can skip a rock. Like, that is just. <laughs> yeah, that is yeah, true. I mean, the video, I was like, I was like, damn, like, in the, you know, in real life, like, you know, I just saw a splash and I wasn't really aware of the speed, you know, like, there's nothing, nothing to gauge speed, you know, it's just all flat water. Um, but in seeing the video, I was like, yeah, we like kind of skipped, skipped along there pretty good. So. What, what did that feel like? Did it feel like you were coming to a stock pretty quickly? Did you no, like, no. fall it forward at all? Was it? Like, you know, like, like if you ride a roller coaster where they really slam you onto your face at the end of the ride, it wasn't anything even close to that. When we hit the water initially, you know, kind of there was a little bit of a of a jolt forward, and then maybe when it came to a full stop, there was a slight jolt forward. But you know, my neck is fine. Like you know, we were not sore. There's not a scratch or a bruise on us. I mean, we are completely, um, you know, unscathed. So uh, there, there really was like almost zero impact. You know, I've been in car crashes. It was just nothing close to that level of violence. I mean, the airplane looked fucking brand new as it, you know, went under the, uh, the waves, so, wow. yeah, you know, I mean, it was, yeah. Well, you know, and, and the reality is, you know, the vast majority of airplane accidents are survivable. 
and the vast, vast majority of engine failures in a single engine plane are survivable. And it actually, the, the statistics are exactly the same whether it happens and you try to land on land or whether you try to land in, in the water. And, you know, and what I you're saying just kind of corroborates that. A single, a single engine airplane, you know, you're not flying 200 miles an hour. You can put the thing down at whatever, it stalls at 55, 60 knots. You know, I've got VGs on there. I was probably, who knows how fast I was going when, when I actually hit the water. Um, so, you know, a, a crash of that speed, I mean, it's less than a car crash. I mean, you can be, you can go into a head-on car crash at, you know, 35 miles an hour, and the speed is, is more than that. As long as you don't hit something uh, or, you know, spin it, you know, stall and spin it into the ground, you know, if you aim away from buildings and trees, you should be able to, you know, to walk away from it, unless you're really deep in the mountains and it's just rocks and, you know, gnarly trees and mountains everywhere. I, you know, if people can just remain as calm as possible and fly that thing until you, you know, hit the ground and then some, you know, maybe you can still get a little rudder authority out of it and avoid a tree or, or whatever it is, um, you know, I think your, your chances of surviving are, are pretty good. Oh, And you know, there, there was time. Like, if I had even those those, uh, if I had life vests or you know, life raft or something in the back of the plane, I could have definitely gotten to it and you know, hauled it out of the airplane for sure. Sure. Um, so you, you know, I was, I was so just you, you thought it was, it was about a minute before the thing went under. Or? I think it was I, maybe, maybe yeah. you know, I would say thirty seconds to a minute um, from the from us, you know, getting out to it's just gone. Like, I would say thirty sure. seconds to a minute. Okay. So, and and yeah. what what did the Coast Guard guys say? Did they have anything to say about this, or you know, kind of their this perspective on this? This was their first uh, airplane water rescue. They had other stories of you know people sinking boats and doing stuff like that, but this was their first um, airplane water uh, rescue. Wow. Okay. Well, at least they got some practice, and I, I know you had you had big plans for this new airplane. You know, talking about flying Dude, Greenland and Europe, know, and, and now I now know, you're ready I, for all that. I mean, you know, if know, anything happens I, there, I mean, you're good to go. Yeah, I, I mean, definitely. You know, it makes you think twice about flying over a bunch of open water. I, if I did it, I would definitely do it with a, a lot of gear, um, and I would, I would do it after having an airplane for a long time and really getting some trust in it. Um, you know, I just got this thing. I was just kind of you know figuring out how to fly and get comfortable in it, and um, you know, yeah, it'd be, it'd be nice to have a plane for a while and really really get comfy with it and, and just for everybody's gonna wonder like tell me a little bit like what kind of plane was it what did you just have done um it was a 1979 turbo normalized uh, bonanza western skyways turbo i just you know put tip tanks on it flap and gap seals um it's got you know i just put a new top end in it put oxygen in it um i mean it was like you know fully decked out i, I was about to do a whole panel on it um, you know, I've, I've put some serious money into it already, um, and it was it was a great flight airplane. Air Force Tower, Coast Guard Rescue Six Five One One, request Crystal Springs arrival. Coast Guard Six Five One One, Central Tower, Crystal Springs arrival is approved. The wind is two six zero one nine or up to two nine or nine or eight. Two nine or nine or eight, Crystal Springs approved. Coast Guard Six Five One One. Coast Guard Rescue Six Five One One, report a mile south of the field. Rescue One One, we'll cope. Tower for 6511, we did have a successful recovery. Excellent, glad to do that. Made it back to the Coast Guard. Took a nice warm shower. Got warmed up. Here's our, our saviors. Yes. Thanks, guys.